Good evening. Uh, my name is Pastor Dan, and I want to welcome each and every one of you. I want to thank you so much for joining us here on this Christmas Eve as we worship. Uh, if you are a guest with us, welcome. i uh, love to get to know you after the service and, and meet you, and uh, please look for me out in the comments. I'd love to meet with you and talk to you. I want to direct your attention to the red info card that is in your worship folder. We would love for each and every one of you to fill this out. And uh, uh, there's some pencils in the pew right in front of you down by the, the, the hymnals that are down there and the Bible that's down there. Also on the back, if you have a prayer request, we would love to be praying for you. And something that's on your heart and your mind, please fill that out. We'll collect this later in our worship service, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, tonight, we're going to be going on a journey. We're going to be going on a journey of finding out what Christmas is all about. It's a time where we're going to be worshiping our God, our King, but we're also going to be understanding the gifts that he gives to us in Christmas. Uh, but as we get going on that, I want to start by standing up, and we're going to turn to everyone around us and meet them and tell them the best Christmas gift you ever got. All right, stand up and meet somebody around you.
shepherd living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night, and angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all people. All. All. The end of the town of David. Savior. Savior. Has been born to you. He's Christ the Lord. This will be the signs to you. You will find it. a baby. Baby. A baby? A baby. Baby. Wrapped in cloths. And a lion in a manger. Suddenly a great company. Holy host. Find up. Amazing. God is saying. Glory to God in the high. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And on earth's peace to me. On him his favor rest. Luke 2, 8 to 14.
Is he in such mean estate where rocks and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners hear the silent word is Please join me in our responsive reading. This comes from Colossians 1. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before God made anything at all and is supreme over all creation. Christ is the one through whom God created everything in heaven and earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. Kings, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities. Everything has been created through him and for him. It's God. He did not demand and cling to his rights as God. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. In human form, he obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross. Because of this, God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is our prayer. Jesus, come and reign. We respond with some glory.
can have a seat. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with peace, with justice and righteousness, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it?
this Christmas be Christmas by beginning again. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, you know, like Christmas trees and, and lighting and lights and tinsels and, and ornaments and stuff. Christmas. And we've had a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks. Are you kidding me? What do I look like, Julia Child? Hey, you, I'm talking to you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Cousin Sissy, Auntie Dare, Lena, Lima, Nino, oh, Holy Night, and a Happy New Year. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum. You're so far. Bow, bow. Hey kids, you want a hug? No. Because fake butter is for fake people. It's in my eye. It's in my eye. You, you threw it in my eye. But now it's time to put on our best. It's time for us to get serious. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Tonight when you get home or tomorrow before you open presents or sit down for the family feast, grab your Bible. You know, the, the big book that's on the coffee table collecting dust? I'm just kidding. Or am I? It's here somewhere. No, no. Open it up to Luke chapter 2, and with the family around, simply read through the story of Christmas. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. <laughs> Caesar? Caesar Augustus? His first name Caesar? His last name's after a month of the year? <laughs> His parents should have seen that one coming. And afterwards, share a simple prayer together. Me? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't pray. Except at bedtimes and when the Razorbacks are losing. Make a memory and see how the story is for you. How the story changes and impacts you. Most holy Lord, amen. Begin again. Be Christmas. Ow, that's what I get for praying. I always poke myself in the eye. I'm blind. Seriously. Seriously, I'm, I'm blind. See? Nothing. Yeah, well, there's that. All right. Well, Merry Christmas and welcome. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us here for worship. Well, if you've been with us for any amount of time during the month of December, you know that we've been talking about it, how it's easy to get wrapped up in the packaging of Christmas and totally miss what this season that, that so easily distracts us and so easily consumes us is really truly about. But if we stop and we dive into the meaning of the season, which, which sometimes really distracts us and consumes us, what we find out is that Christmas delivers more than just the holiday cheer or a busy schedule, or more than just a whole bunch of calories. No, Christmas delivers to you and to me a wonderful and amazing gift. And, and not the ones that St. Nick brings to us, and not the ones that might be a sweater that is, uh, may or may not be the right size or the right style. No, it's a gift that changes everything. Now, I'm excited because I have uh, three little kids, and there is nothing more exciting than to live out Christmas through the eyes of little kids because they are so excited. They, they come in and they see the presents underneath the, the tree, and their eyes get big, and they get bright, and they're so excited. So I have a son who is five years old. His name is Nate. He's, he's kind of like me. And, and so I know that he is, like, sizing up the presents as he comes in there, and then he's watching to see when I leave because he is picking those up and he's weighing them. He's shaking them a little bit to see if they rattle. He is, he is even doing the squeeze test. But I am praying that she, he did not inherit the unwrap, rewrap trait that came from my wife. <laughs> no, actually, that's Hannah who was born with that. So we already found that out this year. All right. But kids, are you guys excited about Christmas? Anybody excited about Christmas? 
There was a big kid who said yes, louder than everybody else. Uh, are we excited about Christmas? Yes. Are you going to get some great presents? Yes. Do you already know the presents you're going to get? <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, as I was thinking back over the presents that I've gotten over the years, um, it, it kind of hit me. I mean, the anticipation is always at a 10, isn't it? And, and nothing against my parents. My parents tried, and, and, and they did a great job. But, but most of those presents that I got, they didn't, they, didn't quite, they didn't quite go up with all the hype, if you know what I mean. Right? They weren't quite as life-changing or as exciting as I thought they would be. Now, I got some really cool gifts. I'm, I'm a little old, not real old, so I remember that head-to-head -head electronic baseball game that my mom and dad got me, and I was thrilled. I played it till my fingers bled. I, I got this basketball that was just so exciting. I had this, ba this, this new bicycle, a 10-speed, that was thrilling. I had the heaviest gift ever, which was... Um, I like to see my mom and dad load that up. It, it was a weight set when I was in high school. <laughs> and, and yet none of those, those presents defined me, molded me, shaped me. I mean, I played basketball for a number of years. I got pretty decent big biceps from lifting weights for a while. But it's not like I was Arnold Schwarzenegger or Michael Jordan or anything like that, right? But there was one present. There is one present that stands out in memory. There's one present that really shaped me and molded me. And it was so good, I even named it. Yeah, it was an incredible present. It, it, it changed the course of my life for a time. And actually, in a way, I can think about it, it changed the li my course of my life to the point that I'm even here today. It was a present that I had always wanted for. And, and so I actually brought it here today. I rewrapped it. Uh, from my wife's trait. Okay, I rewrapped it, and, and it's a big present, and I love big presents. Who here likes big presents? Yeah, and so I remember when I got here, and I ripped it up, you know, and I got it. It's kind of old now looking, but that's okay. And, and I opened this thing up. Oh, yeah. And I fell in love. My first real guitar. Because before this, I had a guitar I bought for $25. It, it took me a week to get it to run. Yeah, but this one was, was a real guitar. It worked in all, <laughs> you know? And, and when I put it on, who do I look like? Bono, don't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I felt like I was Bono and I could play, and it's got, it's got like an input. It's got EQ. It, it sounds good, and yeah. <laughs> well, Arvo and I... Well, by the way, that's its name. Yeah, Arlo. I still call it Arlo. Arlo and I, we spent a lot of time together and we played a lot together and, and, and I held Arlo quite a bit. In fact, I remember when I was um, in college, my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, wrote me a letter saying, I hope someday you will hold me more than you hold Arlo. But see, Arlo opened up incredible opportunities for me. Arlo changed my major in college, believe it or not, from psychology to youth ministry. <laughs> because I wanted music to be a part of my life. I loved music. I loved playing the guitar and writing music and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I was thinking, you know, I've seen quite a few youth ministers that are guitar playing youth ministers. I haven't seen all that many guitar playing psychologists. Feelings, nothing but feelings, you know. And no, it just doesn't happen like that. But Arlo added something to my life. It molded and shaped me. It was the best Christmas gift ever. Have you ever had a gift like that? A gift that shaped and changed your life? You know, Christmas is about a gift that's kind of like that. And, and not a guitar, and, and not the presents that are under the tree that, that you're hoping are the ones that you long for, the ones that, that you want, the ones that you need, the ones that you open up and, and you get big smiles, or better yet, big, huge shrieks, you know. No, Christmas is about the best present ever. 
Because the, the reality is, is that the presents that you open up today, after a, a few hours or days, they're going to kind of fade. E- even, even Arlo-type presents fade. I mean, that was amazing for me for a decade or so, but eventually Arlo got replaced. Yeah, by my dream guitar, a Taylor guitar. It was pretty cool. All right, but that's a whole other story. No, it actually got replaced first by a beautiful wife and three beautiful kids. I just don't have the time to, to play guitar anymore. But the best Christmas gift ever never fades. It's a gift that God gives us that shapes us and defines us. It's a, it's a gift that changes our reality. And it offers even the most broken and the most depressed the opportunity to begin again. And that all starts from the very first Christmas. And so let's dig in. If you've got a Bible, pull it out and turn with me to Luke chapter 2. If you've got a smartphone, you can head to the website that's on the screen where you can follow on, you can answer questions, take polls, and so much more. So check it out. But we're going to start out in Luke 2, chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living over out in the field nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Now, I'm a pastor, and it seems like every single year, as I get around this time of year, uh, this season, around Christmas, there is something out of Luke 2 or out of the Christmas narrative that just kind of pops out at me. And for me this year, it's this section. It's this message that the angel gives to the shepherds, this great news that causes great joy for everyone. Because, see, these people at this time, they were looking for some good news. They, they had an economy that wasn't going all that good at the time. They had this dictator that was telling them and demanded them to do this and that, including even if you're nine months pregnant, you had to make this major trek back to the house of your, your ancestors for the census. <laughs> and so Mary and Joseph, they packed it up, and they made an 80-mile hike from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That would be a tough thing to do with somebody nine months pregnant. Man, I, I, I know women that, that are much less pregnant than that that won't make that kind of a trek, that kind of journey in a car, let alone on the back of a donkey. You know what I mean? And yet, and yet there's something cool that's happening. There's something amazing that's happening at this point because we turn back 700 years before to some words in Micah And this guy in Micah, this prophet, is saying this, but you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one that will rule over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. So God is orchestrating something amazing right here. And it's lining up just right So in the midst of a time where the government seems abusive, where morality seems to be waning, where the morale seems to be tanking, in the midst of all of that, people are getting cynical on this whole idea of some life-changing good news that might come, even though there are people like Micah and Isaiah and others who are talking about one that will come that will bring this good news. And in the midst of that darkness, in the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden, out of nothing, comes these angels to share this great news of great joy to these shepherds. Ever be given some incredible news that you just couldn't keep to yourself? Where you're just dying to get to Facebook to post it? Or where you, you call somebody right away, you want to tell a friend about it? Or, or you run home to tell your, your, your family about it? For years, um, my wife and I, we had some challenges on getting uh, pregnant, and and we had a number of miscarriages, and so we would never tell anybody about uh, one of our pregnancies until after we had an ultrasound to make sure everything was okay. And and so about six years ago, we were there at the doctor's office doing this ultrasound, and and this lady had us come in, and she was, this nurse was working on it, 
And she was quiet for a real long time, and she's going, hmm, huh. And I think it was only about three minutes, but it felt like an hour, okay? And Andrea and I are looking at each other across the room, kind of worried. And all of a sudden, this nurse looks up and sees that we're kind of worried. She goes, oh, oh no, you have nothing to be worried about. Watch this. And she puts up on the screen. And she goes, see, here's the head, and here's the arms, here's the legs of the first one. And here's the second one, (laughs) twins. Now, I'm a guy and all, and guys don't cry. I bawled. I'm just saying, all right? And we were like, wow, this is like life-changing, earth-shattering kind of news, if you know what I mean. And so we left there, and we went, and we told anybody and everybody we knew about this incredible news. Back to Luke 2. The angel showed up to the shepherds, and the shepherds were freaked out about it. Obviously, you would have been too. And the angel said, you don't need to be terrified. You don't need to be afraid because guess what? I'm not the ghost of Christmas past or something like that. I have actually good news to share with you. Verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find this baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then a ton of angels showed up and made this huge explanation mark for them about this event. And the shepherds headed off to go find out what it's about. Look at verse 16. And so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. And what they found was something that they weren't looking for, something they didn't expect, but was the greatest gift of all because it was life-changing, it was reality-breaking, it was eternity-making news of great joy. And so they had to head out and tell everyone they could. Friends, The one that they found that night is the same one that we find tonight in these words of the Christmas story. It's Jesus the Messiah. See, this is the greatest news, the best gift ever because it's everything we've ever needed. See, when Jesus came as a baby, he came for one purpose only. He came to grow into a man so that he could go and humble himself to innocently be crucified and put on a cross in my place and in your place. And and now I get it. I understand. I know that there are some people that are here this evening that are here because a loved one begged them to come. I get that. And and I understand that, that because of a past, because of um, a relationship that's gone wrong or because of vile that's come out of your mouth, of selfishness, of, of temper, of, of addictions, or whatever it is from your past that comes back and faces you, you feel like, I don't know if I really should be here. I don't know if this is really where I should be. And, and I get that so many people think that, you know, church and religion are for religious kind of people that are good and nice and all buttoned up. But hear this, there's no accident why you're here here tonight. And there's absolutely no accident that God came through angels and showed up to rough around the edges, far from perfect shepherds, to deliver this message of great joy to. Because he knew, he knew that this was a lost and broken world. And Jesus came for for the lost and the broken, the messed and and the fallen apart kind of people. He came to bridge the gap for people like you and me. And so even if your laundry list of of mess-ups is a mile long, even if you are more naughty than nice, he came to give us what we need. A few moments ago, we heard some verses out of Isaiah. One of those was out of Isaiah 53 where it said this, 
He was pierced for our transgressions. That's a big word for our sins, our mess-ups, our junk in our life. The punishment that was brought on us, or punishment that brought us peace was put upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. See, what the Bible says is that it doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter the stuff that you've done in your life. Jesus came for you. That's what Christmas is all about. He came for you to build a bridge. And the Bible says that if you believe in him as your Savior and if you confess the mess in your life, he will forgive you. He will give you the opportunity. He will give you the gift to begin again, which means the guilt is left behind, which means the junk in your life is wiped clean, and you are forgiven, and you are set free. And yet this gift of Christmas is great news and and the best gift ever because it's everything that we've ever looked for. See, I know, I I may be a pastor, but I struggle with the same things that every single one of us struggle with it that are here. We've all had those thoughts in our minds where we look at our careers, we look at our families, we look at our life, we look at our legacy that is happening, and we start wondering, is that all? I mean, isn't there something more? And, And we start searching for this meaning and purpose in our life. And so we buy into this idea that, well, maybe the next promotion or maybe a better house or, or maybe, maybe my kids' accomplishments will deliver that for me. And yet, no, it doesn't happen. And yet this baby, this Emmanuel, this God with us has come, and through him we have meaning and direction in our life, a life that is, is falling apart, is sputtering, is chaotic, exhausting at best. We just heard words from Isaiah 40, which said, did you not know, have you not heard? One of my favorite verses. He will not grow tired or weary. The Lord is the everlasting God. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And so as the world, world around us tells us to look at ourselves, as the world around us tells to, you know, rely on our own reason or try a little bit harder or uh, think of yourself or follow a new fad, <laughs> Jesus says, no, don't look at yourself. Look at, look at me. See, I have come for the weary and the tired. I have come for the confused and and the person who is is afraid. I've come to bring meaning and purpose. I've come to bring guidance and direction. And that's an incredible gift. And yet the final thing that we find in the manger, this great news, this best gift ever, is is that it's everything that we've held out for. Held out for, huh? I'm a football fan, and I've been watching the Razorback fans. I've only been here nine months, and so I'm working on it, okay? This is a tough year to get on the bandwagon, let me tell you. (laughs) But you Razorback fans, you had a whole season of games where you, you know, you probably wanted to leave if you were there. You probably wanted to shut it off if you were at home. You probably yelled at it quite a bit. And yet most of you probably held out, didn't you? And you watched it all, or almost all of it. Real life is not a whole lot different. So we turn on the news and we see the headlines of all the things that are going on, these tragedies and and stuff. Or we look at our own life and we see the challenges that we have. Oh, now i got to deal with high blood pressure. Oh, now my uncle has got cancer. Oh, now my my career is not going according to plan. Oh, now my, my holidays are all ruined because... I'm dealing with the sadness, this loss of a a loved one in my family. And yet we're there stuck just holding on, holding out hope for some good news, for, for something more, for some good days, for something. Isaiah 43. 
Isaiah 43 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And when Isaiah was speaking these words, he was pointing to the manger. He was pointing to this night. And see, when we come to the manger, we come face to face with a God that, that even though the world around us feels like it's falling apart, we still have a God that is in control. And even though we have a past and we have done things in that past that, that haunt us, we still have a God that loves us and a God will, will do anything, even come to earth to save us. We have a God. We have a God that loves us and will come and do what it takes to bring us hope. Hope in those times when we have guilt, hope in those times when we have trials or tragedy that stare us in the face. And that's the greatest news, the best gift ever. Well, it's Christmas, and I, I hope you are blessed with some wonderful gifts tonight. I really do. Or tomorrow morning or whenever you open them up. But my prayer is that you would come face to face with the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus. That is one gift that will never fade or break. That is one gift that is life-changing and eternity-making. That is one gift that gives you the, the hope and the grace, the strength and the opportunity to begin again no matter who you are. That is some great news of great joy for you and yours this Christmas. And so my prayer is that you would be Christmas and you would begin again in Jesus. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you know what we need and not what we want. And that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and even though we rejected him, even though we pierced him, even though we put him on a cross, it is exactly what we need. Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes to see this gift that, that you have given to each and every one of us, and that we would feel and know and trust in that grace that you give to us and that promise you give to us. That you would overwhelm us with the Pope with the peace and the hope that you give to each and every one of us through your son, Jesus Christ, that you are in control, that you love us, and that your salvation plan is law, is way in action, and you're coming back to take us, that you promise us eternal life. We praise you. We thank you. We ask that you would help us to begin again and be Christmas. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the, the kids to come forward for, um, uh, the, for, from the school to sing the song during the offering. And during this time also, we're going to be collecting our offering. I want to point out that if you have a red info card, please drop that in the offering plate at that time. If you're a guest with us this, this evening, your presence, that info card, is your gift back to us. If you call this place home, you can worship God by giving back a portion of what he has given you.
Thank you guys for, for singing for us tonight. Uh, let's stand and let's go to before our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for this night. We praise you for this night that, you, that we remember the moment you brought great news that has caused great joy to all of us. For unto us a child is born in a manger in Bethlehem, and that child was your son, Christ the Lord. It was your son that you gave us the greatest gift of all, a gift that fulfills our hopes. That is all that we have ever looked for or have ever needed, a gift that has allowed each one of us broken and wounded to begin again in your forgiveness, your love, your freedom. So help each one of us to internalize that gift and know you as Lord and Savior. We pray for those that are struggling at this time of year as we miss those that, that have left us. We pray, Lord, that you would help us find comfort and peace in you at this time. We pray for peace in this world, that your kingdom come, that your love would be shown and your grace contagious in this world. And we pray all of this confidently in the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a tradition of singing carols by candlelight. And uh, we are going to be lighting some uh, our, our candles from the, the Christ candle in the center, as it shows kind of the light of the world coming out into each one of our lives as we get that gift of Christmas, of grace, of hope, and of peace. I want to just some housekeeping here. As we pass this light down, so as somebody has a lit candle, if you would keep that candle straight up and down, and as we pass it from one person to another, if you have an unlit candle, that you would lean your candle over to light it. Till he appeared and the soul fell. 
And so now we hear these words, these words of blessing that gets poured out in each one of our lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his unending peace. You've been blessed to be a blessing. Go in his peace. And Merry Christmas. Amen. A couple quick announcements before we sing one last song of praise. And that uh, we have a couple things that follow in the service right now. And that we have a reception in the fellowship hall. We invite each and every one of you to be there. Uh, we have some a place for you to take a portrait as a family, a picture. We'd love for you to take advantage of that. Uh, also, if you are a guest with us this evening, thank you so much for visiting with us and, and joining us in worship. We have a guest bag that we want to hand to you out in the commons. There is a welcome sign. We'll have some people there that would love to meet with you and get you that bag. Um, also want to just invite you to come back. If you don't have a church home, please join us on Sundays um, at 8 and at 1030. Let's continue and sing Joy to the World.